It's my favorite Christmas tradition, finding weird old holiday kids films that are just terrifying if you watch them today, and then trying to one-up it the next year. With this, we got Wizzo the Clown, that looks like a program you'd find in the Devil's Rejects universe. Then there's Miss Velma that, honestly, I could probably say the same thing about. There's the magic Christmas tree, and you know what, come to think of it, all of these were probably owned by serial killers. There is also Santa and Mother Goose, as well as Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin. It's up to you to decide which one is the most frightening, and only then will you be able to get your soul back. Enjoy. Calm down, Bert. They haven't started yet. You know, you're really gonna thank me for busting out the Christmas episodes a little early this year. Sure, Thanksgiving hasn't even happened yet, but when you're sitting on top of this much crazy, it would be downright selfish to wait until December. So for those of you who thought Fun in Balloon Land seemed like just any old day of the week, I give you Ms. Velma's most incredibly magnificent Christmas week. It's what happens when you leave the Christmas party up to Tim Noah, Anna Nicole Smith, and Aunt Martha from Sleepaway Camp. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight Less gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly. This doesn't seem like a Christmas special. It seems like that movie that's always playing on the TV whenever the cops burst into the serial killer's house. Ms. Vilma's most incredibly magnificent Christmas week is also known as Ms. Vilma's This is Christmas, or Ms. Vilma's Christmas in America, or Ms. Vilma's This is Christmas in America. I see it's Ms. and not Mrs. <laughs> Do go on. Ms. Velma was an evangelist from Los Angeles where apparently you could just put on any Christmas special you want, even if its intent was to not only make the baby Jesus cry, but all babies everywhere. With a great big belly that shakes when they laugh like a bowl full of jelly. Ms. Velma is scary, and her special is scary. I don't like Christmas anymore. Given that this has no IMDb page, I had to look elsewhere for some information on its star, Ms. Velma, such as this Facebook fan page, where really all you need to know is that she's the most powerful woman in the world and God's only messenger of eternal youth. Whoa, move over, Mamie Van Doren. Ms. Velma's full name is Velma Jaggers, who according to her bio on the Universal World Church website, was married to Dr. Orville Lee Jaggers, the founder of the World Church. So then why isn't it Mrs. Velma? It was very convenient, because when the Jaggers got married, Velma didn't have to change her last name, because they're both first cousins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Doesn't take long for things on the Facebook page to get a little weird, too. Seems innocent enough at first, such as this magazine ad for a program called Christmas Around the Avenue Stars, until you see that it's part of... <laughs> what the fuck? They literally selling snake oil? Apparently the sexual hijinks at the Bible Network Ranch are a simple reenactment of Olga's Dance Hall Girls. Not that the other websites are less creepy, where one webpage um, resides at the gates of hell, and another starts off with a picture that seems like Rosemary going on a date with a Cold War spy. Now, I'm definitely not feeling the Christmas spirit, and last week I watched a Christmas movie with baby killing. Might as well jump right into this, since that's what the special does. No credits or anything, just a story about the little Christmas tree that could. It wasn't very long ago. It stood so straight and tall. Cooped up in a pile in the corner. I will say that Ms. Velma may be my favorite of Jessica Lange's American Horror Story characters. She definitely talks like she's a little drunk. It had that dreadful fear that it mightn't be quite big enough. If you're already watching this special, you might as well get your spiritual advice from someone who uses words like mightn't. I, for one, always go with the Christmas tree that has a bright light coming out its vagina. And every branch on every tree was decked. In lovely white. Well, except for these trees, they're decked out in only a few dozen lights we found in a garage sale. Careful, you're gonna give the little tree a complex. They wanted one that was large enough to touch the ceiling high. Great, we've gone from a Charlie Brown Christmas with the tiny tree to Christmas vacation with Clark's gigantic tree. And before you ask if the tree's got a squirrel in it, oh, don't worry. There's animals in this special. Kinda. I'm very disappointed. I would have thought Zsa Zsa Gabor would have put a lot more money into her Christmas special. But the best part of the tree is that it's a fucking patriot. Little Pine was loved at last, had grown 17 feet tall to stand. What kind of story is this? You're talking about the little pine tree being neglected, and then you just neglected it for a much larger tree. This seems like Ms. Velma's most incredible witness protection Christmas, as I can barely make out anyone's face. This is Christmas in America. Oh, can't argue with that. We're next introduced to a singer named Robin Lee, who seems as sober as anyone else at the party. Hmm, I prefer Robin Lee's celebrity hot tub. This better end with someone putting a cape around her. What's it matter to you when Christmas Day is? You're going to be way too hungover. Here she is, pushing the bell, as if she wants to confirm that it's really in front of her. I keep saying she, even though I'm really just taking a guess. Maybe she's part of the upcoming reality show. Who wants to be the next Keith Partridge? Why does something with so much lights look like the darkest corner of Ed Gein's farmhouse? A Captain Spaulding Christmas is just as terrifying as I thought it would be. The only bright part is when the tracking almost goes out. And now here's Ms. Velma portraying Delta Burke as a Russian nesting doll. This is Christmas in America. Thanks for telling me twice. You truly are an American treasure. Hmm. Blue tree, red tree, if I hang an ornament on the blue tree, will it be like it was all a dream? Uh, what's Miss Velma's story here? <laughs> Nothing culty going on here! You wanna just reveal the wicker man now, or wait until the end? Wow, 
she really is the most important person in the world, because I think she might be Xenu. Is someone going to say something? Oh, good. A dog barking. You know what? I'll take that. What the fuck you are? Why the hell did you sound like a Labrador? I carried his mother uphill and down to Bethlehem town. Oh, it's the donkey that carried the Virgin Mary. I guess carrying all that weight turned it into a completely different animal. The hell is that all about? Ah, so we're gonna hear from the sheep now? God damn it! You didn't know what a raccoon sounded like, so you just put some sheep sounds in? By the way, you look more like a dog. Are you what was barking before it cut to the donkey? What's next? Are you gonna show me a giraffe and tell me it's a fucking duck? Holy crap, someone beat the shit out of Cookie Monster. I am the cow. Moo, moo, moo. Well, give Miss Velma some credit. At least she knows what a cow sounds like. I gave him my manger for his bed. And they also fed on you for about a week. Any other animals to hear from? I am the cow. Moo. Not you! We just heard from you! I am the bull. <laughs> I don't remember the toy going, and the bull says, <laughs> I see that the bull shops at the same necktie store as the donkey. What did the bull do that was so important? Wow, so Joseph really did do nothing here. He couldn't even fetch wood for his wife. He needed a talking bull to do it. And if they actually let people know that they discovered talking animals, they'd probably be rich enough to stay somewhere other than a manger. After hearing from the manger babies, every vegetarian suddenly feels okay with eating animals. Oh, fuck no, they're starting over. Ms. Velma, please say something. In the stable dark, was glad to tell of the gift he gave Emmanuel. Ugh. It wouldn't be Christmas without creepy Uncle Bill giving the kids copies of Emmanuel. Ms. Velma then realizes not all of the animals have told their stories. So not only do all the animals start talking at once, but it's like if you combine the chipmunks with an electronic battleship that's been possessed by Pazuzu. So in comparison, Balloon Land does indeed look fun and normal. Case in point, this entire stage show is being performed in front of an empty audience. There is not a single person in attendance for fear Miss Velma was going to go scanners on their ass. Too bad, they missed out on the Miss Velma trio representing the great state of Alaska. Because that's how we make this crazier. Bring the Palins into it. Spoiler, this is why Butch and Sundance wanted to go out guns a blazing. Do you need to hear more? It won't be long till happiness steps up to greet me. Eh, the words don't need to rhyme. So long as BJ Thomas is crying himself to sleep, that's the real point of the song. Look at this. If only Waco lasted a little longer, they would have put on a hell of a Christmas pageant. Maybe with better instruments. Ah! 
the hell is that sound? It's like they're not even playing an actual instrument, but instead are just pulling a bunch of mouse tails. And why the hell do you need an intermission for a show with no audience? Stay tuned for the second half, featuring more of Miss Velma's beautiful staging and magnificent costumes. Oh, not gonna lie, I wouldn't miss it for the world. You will see her very beautiful Indian scene and costumes, featuring Miss Balma shooting a real gun on the stage. What the fuck? So that's why there's no audience? She shot all of them before Sid Vicious got the chance to? And now we cut to Cher winning her Oscar for Moonstruck. Now it all makes sense. Oh, never mind. It's Brando winning his Oscar. Do I even want to know? Christmas in America would not be complete without the great American Indian tribes and the Indian people paying their respect to the birthday of Jesus. Mm, yes, and what kind of respect does that look like? <laughs> Good old-fashioned stereotyping, of course. <laughs> when Bing Crosby said that he was dreaming of a white Christmas, I don't think he meant this white of a Christmas. And they really mean it when they said this is Christmas in America. Watch Miss Velma, who is a crack shot, typify this with a pistol using live ammunition. After this, she will play the hand organ. Because when firing live rounds on stage during your Christmas special, sometimes you just gotta play the hand organ. Okay, Miss Velma, what's your shooting arm like? I'm glad they established this is live ammunition. It's not like I can even tell she hit anything, but at least they warned me about the hand organ. That's not a hand organ, she just figured out a way for her electronic football game to make music. And what does indoor Christmas shooting make Miss Velma feel like doing? <laughs> Careful, you're gonna cause it to start raining, and then you'll get electrocuted. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Helen Mirren in her riskiest role yet as she shapeshifts right into Tammy Faye Baker. This is Christmas in America. Yeah, I got the point with the indoor shooting. <laughs> and since we haven't pissed off all cultures yet... Here are the Miss Velma Youth Singers, representing the state of Hawaii. Mmm, this is gonna be a bunch of homeless people you found on the street, isn't it? Wow, this is the worst thing to happen to Hawaii since Cameron Crowe's Aloha. Also, youth singers my ass. If these are youth singers, then the football players and Debbie Does Dallas are high school students. Confusing these with youth singers, it's like confusing the Brat Pack with the Rat Pack, and then confusing the Rat Pack with Ms. Velma's youth singers. No matter how youthful their voice is. This special is questionable, but the alcohol potency in their eggnog sure isn't. Nothing sadder than middle-aged men tossing their lays onto a bunch of empty seats. But Angel Ms. Velma comes close. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world, he swung Ms. Velma right out the window. Oh great, now I have to pay attention to a text crawl. I'm watching Ms. Velma's most incredibly magnificent Christmas week. I shouldn't have to know how to read. It's telling us that we're invited to see Ms. Velma's vision of Christmas tree life, which I guess is just a trash bag? But wait, bring the names of your families and loved ones, cause I'm sure you want Ms. Velma to know the names of all those that you know and love. Honestly, who needs text? This image should just speak for itself.
<laughs> Thanks for telling us all about the music, when I'm pretty sure I can hear the rapture going on outside. It keeps saying that this is morning, even though it looks like the blackest night since 30 days of night. Thank God Miss Velma's voice makes everything sunny and cheerful. And the graves are open, and many bodies of the saints which slept shall arise. What channel did this air, and what was it like stumbling upon this? For he is risen to send a messenger unto you, to bring you this spirit of eternal resurrection you. And now it's bleeding into Ms. Velma's Easter special? You're robbing me of seeing Ms. Velma in a pink bunny outfit, and I'm not sure how, but I'm positive she'll incorporate blackface. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I don't think Ms. Velma is a real angel. I could probably understand a real angel better. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. <laughs> and like every Christmas party, politics get brought up, though it's just a bunch of drunken words woven into meaningless sentences. But who am I to question Miss Velma's words? She might shoot me. As if anything else could creep me out in this. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Oh, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at death right now, since it's pretty hard to both watch Ms. Velma's Christmas special and survive. And that's while also looking at creepy Saruman Jesus. But just wait until you get to Ms. Velma the Statesman. <laughs> yep, that's something that happens. <laughs> oh, honey, I don't think that Popemobile is going to protect shit. Didn't think this through when you climbed into it, huh? My Golden Eagle minibus was not as quiet as a mouse. That's because you made a shitload of noise trying to figure out how to get out of the thing. Ah, uh, just what we need to see. Santa Claus driving a bus and sticking his ass in the air. And being a threat to pedestrians. I am the driver so fast, I almost caused a crash. Again, spiked eggnog is fully on display here. And what mighty nice high heels you have on, Santa. Since Miss Velma is now a Santa Claus wearing women's clothing statesman, what's her political platform like? House of Representatives, Supreme Court, and all should honor Christ's birth, or else they will fall. Because nothing bad ever comes out of ignoring the separation of church and state. <laughs> now let's get the schools involved. Churches and schools, university strong, owe allegiance to Christ, or they have gone wrong. Yes, but without that, then you wouldn't get to be the victims in God's Not Dead too. <laughs> See? Everyone's a winner! Except for those in this scenario. I looked for the elders, wondered where they could be. They were beating their wives beneath the big tree. Boy, so Ms. Velma, the statesman, has a very hardline position supporting church being integrated into state, but she apparently doesn't give a shit about her elders' domestic abuse problems. Also, she stole Robin Lee's van, probably because that's where all the good pot brownies are. And now, one of the saddest shots in the special. <laughs> I could watch that all day. It's like she's racing the text crawl, and she's losing. If this van's a-rockin', please come a-knockin'. Elders are beating their wives. And now, one of the other saddest shots in the special. <laughs> mm, 
Much like Saving Christmas, this movie is also a lot of stalling. Ooh, there's them youth singers again, still 45 and standing in the wrong spot. Gentlemen, please, you're making this special embarrassing. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Fleetwood Mac should never do a Christmas special again. This is Christmas in America. Unlike all those Christmases for commies! Alaska, Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas... Colorado. Wait, what? <laughs> no, no, she isn't. Connecticut, Delaware, Florida. Oh my god, she is actually gonna name all 50 states. Is that why this still has 10 minutes left? Kansas, Kentucky. This is Christmas in America. Oh good, I guess she forgot the rest. So, <laughs> you know, happens to the best of us. Louisiana. Uh, oh, never mind. She just needed to take a breather by reminding herself what country the states are in. Wisconsin, Wyoming, and California. Because there comes a time when you have to say, <laughs> to hell with being in alphabetical order. Now I know what Sean Hannity beats off to every Christmas Eve. It's for those fine Americans who want their Christmas gifts wrapped up in a big old box of Reagan. The special goes out just like it arrives, abruptly and with people singing over Miss Velma to where you can't even hear her. God bless this VCR which quit recording the thing. Well, I found my new Christmas tradition, scaring myself to death with random videos I find in my collection. Can't argue with a lot of the title. In its own way, it is incredible, it is magnificent, and it is Christmas, but I'll be damned if it's taking place over the course of a week. Ms. Velma's most incredibly magnificent Christmas week is what it's known as when it's part of the double feature, which includes both this and Rockets Your Decision as its A feature. Yeah, that's right. Ms. Velma plays second banana to Rockets Your Decision. Because when you feel like smashing your albums because your ignorance makes you misunderstand song lyrics, you just gotta follow that up with flying angels and middle-aged youths in Sardou's Christmas Pit of Hell. Ms. Velma sadly passed away in 2004 at the age of 84, and it suggested that this Christmas special was probably made during the bicentennial year of 1976, given how it has more shout-outs to America than to Christmas. But Ms. Velma's career in public access television spanned many years, which means it is our duty as patriotic Americans to unearth every single one of these specials. Now, before we get into today's bit of batshit insanity, I, uh, I feel like I should change the poster in the background. I don't even know if Christmas is mentioned in Winter's Tale. I gotta have some other poster laying around. Oh, it's this poster from, uh, uh from Eric Freeman. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, Eric Freeman? Hang on. Cinema hack, eat shit asshole, you're the shit stain in the panties of life, fuck off, the garbage man? I just got insulted by Ricky Caldwell. I am gonna make sweet, passionate love to this poster. The magic Christmas tree is a bit of what the fuck 1960s that feels like the fever dream caused by whatever drug Santa Claus slipped the ice cream bunny. It's about little Mark who receives a magic ring from a witch that brings forth, you guessed it, a magic Christmas tree. The poster, on the other hand, does not fill me with confidence that this movie was made by cinematic professionals. First off, it looks to me like it's about Santa Claus fucking the magic Christmas tree. And I highly doubt this theatrically released film was live, never before on the screen? Mm, yeah, that is usually the case when a movie's a new release. I sure hope Bluto is at least good in this film. 
Okay, let's see how magical this Christmas tree film is. My god. Bob Revere was right. Not only did they change it from Christmas pictures to holiday pictures, but there was absolutely no Christmas music playing. <laughs> I still don't care. This movie has no business being about Christmas when they haven't even taken their Halloween decorations down. But on the plus side, they got rid of that whole segregated water fountains thing. Even if the black kid's voice seems like it was recorded very, very far away from the other actors. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. I thought that old bell was never going to ring. Where we been set? The benches are all full. Well, I wonder what kind of sandwich I have today. Probably meatloaf. How do you know? Yeah, look, he's on screen with the rest of the kids. What more do you want? They even got to bring their own lunch. Guess what mine is, fellas? Baloney! Oh, how'd you guys know? Because they've been practicing saying the word baloney simultaneously for months. These kids are method actors. Seriously, they won't stop talking about their food. Well, every day for a year now, you've had a bologna sandwich in your lunch. That's how we know. Mine's cheese. I'll trade you my bologna for your cheese. Oh, I thought so. Meatloaf. Here, Dave, I'll trade you. Oh, boy. Jimmy. Wait a minute. What? Well, a meatloaf sandwich is worth more than a bologna sandwich. You gotta throw in the banana, too. This is the longest Lipton's Cup of Soup commercial I've ever seen. We get it. Your lunches are lame. And why does this keep feeling more like a Halloween film? What are you guys gonna do tonight? I'm gonna take my sister to a Halloween party. That's a heck of a way to spend Halloween. Parties, girls. Um, partying and girls is the only way to celebrate Halloween. That and a lot of vodka cranberries. This movie has such a combination of Halloween and Christmas, I can't believe Hot Topic doesn't sell t-shirts of it. These kids have their priorities, though, which is to go check out the haunted house that's owned by a witch. Oh, she's no witch. Well, she looks like a witch. Always dressed in black, and with that long, scraggly hair, and a big nose, and all hunched over, like... Like in storybook. Oh yeah? If she's a witch, why did you just talk without your lips moving? You're all little demons. Just where is this house? We can take the long way home. What long way? Out Elm Street. Yeah, great. It's that Freddy Krueger prequel where he just goes around molesting a bunch of children. Enough talk about baloney. Let's get a good look at this witch. Lucifer! Lucifer! Are you up there in that tree? Lucifer! Answer me! I don't know what these kids are afraid of. That lady can't even find her cat. After getting shooed away from Boo Radley's, they make it to the witch's house. Lucifer! I warn you, huh? Her lips aren't sinking either. This whole town is full of witches! They've even convinced us that this is a Christmas movie. And never forget that Mark is their stern leader. What now? I think I got a rock on my shoe, too. Well, I don't, so come on! Fuck your feet! If Mark's feet are fine, then so are yours, goddammit! The other two are too scared to go in the house. Especially the black kid. He knows he'd be the first one to be killed. The Buttercream Gang was a lot different in the 60s. Back then, it was them who knocked over the Widow Jenkins. Just remember, Timmy, Lassie isn't here to protect you this time. Gotcha, boy! <laughs> oh, sweetie, quit pinching my it's arm! Still, I'm not going to hurt you. Well, time to get molesting! I wasn't gonna do anything! If I let you go, will you promise not to run away? Now, promise. Okay, I promise. Just quit pinching my arm! Eh, Miss Gulch liked to take dogs away from young girls. This witch likes touching the neighborhood children. Unless they can get her cat down from the tree. Uh, must be the days when you couldn't just lure a cat in with a can of tuna like this. Uh, 
He's on a no-tuna diet now, apparently. Though it is 1964, so the black cat is lucky they didn't spray him away with a fire hose. Well, that might be better than depending on Mark. <laughs> I sure hope this is nothing like Wizard of Oz. My god, it's in color now. Clearly a rip-off of that alternate version of Rocky Horror Picture Show. And she is a witch! You are a witch! A real witch! Yes, you found out my secret. Then I work part-time at a spirit Halloween. I'm not entirely convinced this movie is as well made as the Wizard of Oz. Thanks, camera angle. Now I know the house has a roof. I didn't think it was possible, but changing this to color appears to make the kid more white. The color seems to be confusing him. The kid actor can't decide on which direction he should be facing. And is it just me, or is she much hotter as a witch? And like every crazy old lady, she gives the kid a magic ring. Did I say magic? I mean her granddaughter made that in art class because she got ripped off on a gumball machine. The hell is the deal with this ring, anyway? It will grant you three wishes. I have a wish. Wait until Halloween is over to start doing Christmas things. Also, don't forget the magic words. What magic words? Rimbum, Karenum, Oh. What the hell? Those words aren't magic. Oh my god. This erection wasn't here before. It doesn't take too long for this to get more awkward. If you think ugly, you see ugly. If you think beautiful, you see beautiful things. Do you think beautiful things about your mother? Gee, yes. She's real pretty. Now I know our hero jacks off to his mom. I'm caring less and less about this story. And someone just put their cigarette out on the film. Are we going to get to Christmas or what? Oh good, someone knocked their calendar off their desk. Sure hope they get it to the right date. Now we get to see what Mark's home life is like. I get the wishbone. Well, you'll take what I give you. Dad! Normally, Mark is forced to eat cigarette butts and a can of chew. This meal is a step up for Mark. Oh, is he into the sports? I can't tell if he's into the sports. He likes both the Dodgers and the Yankees. We don't want to piss off both coasts. But now is the perfect time for Mark to ask Santa if he'll marry him. And if you think this movie won't get weirder... Come on, Ichabod, wake up! Everybody's asleep now! Hey, show some respect to Ichabod the Turtle. After all, he has his own IMDB page, where apparently he's so versatile that he once played the voice of a cat. Now, don't worry, Lloyd. You still have more credits on your IMDb page. No, seriously, he does. We as a society were right to create the Ninja Turtles toys. It prevented little kids from collecting turtles like a serial killer collects mannequins. Meanwhile, in Amityville, he goes outside to grow the magic tree, but instead gets an evil lamp, an evil clock, and an evil dollhouse. He's lucky he doesn't find his dad's dead hookers. I sure hope he remembers the magic words. Rimbum, Carrinum, Po. Oh, like that's really gonna grow a magic tree. God damn it! Let's see how quickly this tree grows. <laughs> Convincing. Almost as convincing as mom and dad's fiery passion. More coffee, dear? More coffee, dear? Mm -hmm. That's strange. There's nothing in the paper about it. I asked if you wanted more coffee. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, honey. I forget that sometimes your mouth can make words. Maybe they'll talk about something exciting, like the weather. There's nothing in the weather report about a thunderstorm. Matter of fact, it says nothing but clear weather. 
Well, I didn't hear any thunder. Mom hasn't felt thunder like this since their wedding night. Anymore, it's just a lot of snoring and crying. And Dad's more obsessed with other things, like yard work. <laughs> Come on, Dad, treat it like your malfunctioning penis. Pour a bottle of scotch in it. <laughs> Christ, is the mower not working? I haven't gotten the point yet. Tempting me to make another malfunctioning penis joke. This movie is padding itself out to an hour by showing the frustrations of a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Thank fucking Christ! Now do we get to watch something exciting? You know, like him actually mowing? I take back what I said last week. There is a war on Christmas. This movie is making me never want to celebrate anything ever again. The most exciting thing about this movie is watching Ichabod the Turtle eat. Mom is now reminded just how clumsy Dad is at oral sex. He once sprained his ankle when accidentally licking her kneecap. For God's sake, run into something! What was that? I'll call you back, Betty. What the fuck? Did he just hit a turtle or a box of dynamite? Uh, I guess the tree blew him up. I was mowing the lawn when I ran into this tree. This tree? My, such a beautiful tree. Never mind that. Where did it come from? Just because the tree wasn't there the night before is no excuse for you to not see a giant tree in front of your face. But the real issue here is that Mom dared to venture outside the kitchen. I don't think you should cut it down. Helen, just go back into the house and do whatever it was and leave me alone. You know, all of that making meatloaf and bologna sandwiches sorcery. And fuck your damn mower, is the turtle okay? Yahoo! Good, the turtle is fine, but can someone get rid of the sound effects box from Going Bananas? Unfortunately, he can't cut the tree down because it's made with the finest American steel. Hopefully, we get to see this for an extended period of time. Ouch. Idiot! Why are you sweating? Nothing is happening. Just give up already. Okay, little tree. Looks like you're one of the family. Well, those are words he's never said to Mark's black friend. Oh, good. Just what this movie needs. A weird Christmas parade. I'm sure he could do a hundred tricks. He's doing one now. Yes, he's kneeling on one leg. That's very difficult for a horse. Cut that shit out! I will never have fun in Balloon Land. But Magic Christmas Trees aren't the movie's only twist. Hurry and finish dressing, dear. The stores will be crowded tonight and we haven't much time. I'm almost finished, Mother. What the hell? Mark is a girl now? Was that his first wish? Oh, he has a sister. Thanks for telling me, movie. And Dad still seems like a bit of a grump. Do you mean to say that you haven't bought the Christmas tree yet, Henry? You haven't seen one around, have you? That beer's not gonna open itself, honey. Ha <laughs> 60s marriage! The family leaves Mark home alone for the night. Except this is 1964, so the wet bandits are just gonna break in and shoot him. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Have fun at the Sterling Cooper Draper price party, and don't do too much raping!
I'll just be here with that tree that does nothing. Gee, how do I know if it's full grown? Oh, I'm full grown, all right. Trees can't talk. Well, don't be silly. If trees can't talk, then how can I answer you? Because I don't think that candy cane I snorted was a real candy cane. What the fuck? The tree can talk? But you look kind of scrawny. Well, I've been through a lot lately and, uh, well, enough of this. Now let's get down to business. And the tree has no time for your body shaming. Why does this movie keep getting weirder? It's gone! The magic Christmas tree! It's gone! The end of that scene just died prematurely. Looks like my wishes are coming true. This tree isn't so much magical as it is grumpy. How'd you get in here? Come, come, boy, don't ask such silly questions. Turn the ring again and say the magic words. This tree wishes he were in the giving tree. He just seems like he wants to be chopped up. And stop looking up the tree's skirt. Christ, tree, crack a joke, why don't you? Boy, you're really powerful, aren't you? I don't wish to brag. <laughs> I get it, because he grants wishes. Ugh. Go back to being grumpy. Or at least give this kid his wish. Is that your wish? An hour of power? An hour of power. An hour of power. Hey, that's not bad. An hour of power. I'm sorry, did he just wish for an hour of white power? Why are we letting this kid do magic things? Good, Mark can now make flowers disappear. He wants to go outside, but can't because it's too dark out. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? You know, light switches are a thing, you fucking idiot. Good, he's been granted the gift of a day for night shot. Now he can leave. At least someone is excited, because it sure isn't the tree. <sighs> Gee, all that magic has made me kind of tired. <sighs> oh, I think I'll take a little... <laughs> Why does the magic Christmas tree need a fucking Xanax? And no one wonders why it's suddenly bright outside. Hopefully Mark uses his powers for good. <laughs> he just got that guy fired! Did he speed up time? Why are so many people out and about? Great, now he's using his powers to make the cops chase after the black guy who was chasing after a runaway truck. I see this ending well in 1964. He also causes a random pie fight on the sidewalk and a runaway fire engine. <laughs> what if there's a real fire that's probably caused by Mark? Won't someone call the cops? Oh, right, the cop car is a runaway too. So I gotta ask, is it too early to call Mark a terrorist? Well, he did one thing right. He caused the end of that scene. So either time has been put back, or his parents have been gone for 24 hours, and they found zero Christmas trees. There's only one thing left to do. Must. Kill. Mark. Considering that tree caused more damage to this town than Carrie White, Dad is right to chop that fucker down. But unfortunately, he still can't find his wife's G-spot. No matter, Mark proves to be the only man of the house and shows Dad their new tree. Well, sure I like it. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. Dad's not used to there being such a long, hard piece of wood in the house. Not only do they have a tree, but Mark finally has a real friend. Mr. Tree, are you awake? What? Who's there? Oh, it's you. Well, I suppose you've come back to ask for your second wish. This tree has more contempt for the main character than I do. Thankfully, Mark gets a second wish, because, you know, it looks like he lives in so much poverty. I want Santa Claus for my very own this Christmas. Ah, the season of kidnapping. Isn't that a bit selfish? Well, I mean, 
After all, Christmas is for sharing, isn't it? I don't care. That's my wish and that's what I want. All to myself. Ugh, how does Veruca Salt's brother manage to be more selfish than Veruca Salt? Here you go, kid. It's a pervy Santa from the mall. Hopefully that'll do. Never mind Home Alone. I'm pretty sure I'm watching a prequel to The Good Son. Can you tell me what is going on here? I'm afraid that you're our prisoner for tonight, Mr. Claus. I can't move! What have you done to me? Relax, Santa. I'm your number one fan. Ebenezer Scrooge has more compassion than this kid. The poor children. The poor, poor children. They'll all wake up in the morning and find no presents. Yeah, the poor kids are used to it. Now Santa is stuck talking to the magic Christmas tree for all of eternity. As for Mark, what? what is he doing? Looking for homeless people to shoot? God, I hope this all ends with the kid getting his eyes shot out. Hey kid, I pissed in that water. You're drinking my piss. <laughs> uh, uh, what the actual fuck? Who are you? You know me, boy. You know me well. Uh, it's the pederast who runs the bicycle shop. This is a very special episode of the Magic Christmas Tree. Run, Mark, run! You're my little boy now. No, I'm not your little boy. You are my little boy. Oh, put me down, put me down. Well, if the threat of appearing on a milk carton isn't enough to scare the kid straight, I'm sure this giant's gonna murder him anyway. I promise never to be greedy again. Not so fast. I must be sure that you mean what you say. I have something to show you. What's with this movie whipping out its dick to kids? Actually, he shows Mark how his wish has affected the entire world. The nation stands aghast today from coast to coast as speculation on the mysterious disappearance of Santa Claus on Christmas Eve leaps from state capital to state capital. At the United Nations, reports were being received from all over the world on the progress of the search for the missing Santa. So that's how the Vietnam War got started. The police are even called in, and the Air Force. That's much easier than parents just buying kids presents themselves. These poor kids, it must suck still having everything. Mark instantly regrets his wish, and is let go by giant Uncle Touchy. Well, I lost him. But I'll find another greedy child to be my slave. I'm sorry, I'm too old for you. And that's the same voice as the tree. Why is the magic Christmas tree also a giant who collects child slaves? So he wishes for Santa to forgive him and for Santa to give presents to all the kids. He doesn't take back the wish that put all these people out of work though, but uh, whatever. At least he'll have his own Stretch Armstrong toy. Unfortunately, though, all he gets in this scene is a bad jump cut. I sure hope this ends with an emotional goodbye to the tree. Goodbye, magic Christmas tree. tree didn't even like you. Why are you crying? Oh, right. It was all a dream. I almost forgot. This is such a ripoff of the Emilio Estevez movie Wisdom. Don't worry. Things are still weird in the real world, too. I was thinking of a plate of cookies and a glass of cold milk. I would like some cookies and milk. I'll get them for you right away. It doesn't matter what reality Mark is in, someone is going to try to poison and molest him. And the last one crosses the finish line. It can't be. It was all a dream. Hi, lad. It's me. And always remember... That's not the same voice as before. I need consistency in my magic Christmas trees. Want to know the real twist of this movie? It's directed by someone named Dick Parrish. Can we not have movies made by parishioners who are directing with their dicks? For Christ's sake, 
I need to see this movie's poster again. Magic and fun for everyone? Oh <laughs> yeah, if you like yard work. Dazzles your eyes, fills you with fun. I don't know what that giant was gonna fill that kid with, but it most certainly was not fun. See, the magic ring, fantastic, unbelievable. What the hell, is Trump selling me this movie? See, the evil witch, the crazy police, and fire engine chase. Oh uh, yeah, this truly is the a view to a kill of Christmas movies. Notice how it doesn't say, see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Probably because Rudolph isn't in the fucking movie. So why is it on the goddamn poster other than to trick people? Ugh, if that's the poster, then what the hell is the trailer like? You know that old Finch place? You mean the one that everybody says is haunted? That's the place! Eh, I guess that's alright. Uh, no adults admitted without children? What the fuck? A movie theater should not have the same sign on its door as Jared Fogel's house. This movie makes me miss the wholesomeness and subtlety of Miss Velma's Christmas. And that movie had a crazy woman firing live ammunition on a stage. Well, thank God next week we have something more normal. You know, an actual horror film. <laughs> if you're going to cut it down, Henry, you should use the axe, not the power mower. Good grief. For the past 10 years, I've done 400 some episodes of this show, and with this, let's call it a movie, I don't even know where to fucking start! Sure, we've sat through plenty of This Exists movies, from Fun in Balloon Land, to Miss Velma's Christmas, to Bat Pussy, to The Magic Christmas Tree. So trust me when I say that this movie will break you. And unlike a lot of stores on the day after Christmas, there will be no refunds. Consider yourself a Gold Star snob fan if you make it through this shit. So what makes Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin even harder to sit through than those movies? Well, normally I could just explain some things myself, but in this case, how about I just show you a clip of the movie? Merry Christmas, everyone! Thanks for your hard work! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Santa! It's a movie of still shots. It's an entire film made up entirely of still shots. Say what you will about Fun in Balloon Land or Miss Velma, but they moved. Er, sometimes. Yes, it has gotten to the point on this show where we can say, hey, at least those other movies had motion. Sure, it'd be one thing if this were a five or ten minute short. It's 70 minutes long. Krampus made this film. If you want to find out more about the movie, you'll have to look beyond IMDb, because at the time of this review, the movie doesn't even have an IMDb page. Even though this poster suggests that it did show theatrically. I could make a joke about how taking your kids to this movie is poor parenting, but I genuinely want to know who the fuck saw this movie in a theater? Even the title is off-putting. Santa's Christmas Elf Named Calvin? Unlike Santa's non-Christmas Elf. And adding the Named Calvin bit is so oddly specific. Why stop there? Why not call it Santa's Christmas Elf Named Calvin, who isn't a huge fan of mushrooms, but doesn't mind cream of mushroom soup, maybe because the mushroom pieces are so small, and the broth has a nice taste that covers the slimy and squishy texture of plain mushrooms. I do know more about the movie, such as who wrote it, who produced it, and who directed it, but we'll get to that at about the halfway point in the film, because trust me, by then, you're gonna need a fucking break! 
Let's get this shit over with. Pfft, that's not a real location. So, it's Christmas Eve, and this is a movie made for that relative who will not stop showing you his photo albums! Seven of the elves worked super fast, making the last of the shiny new toys. But the eighth little elf, named Calvin, worked slowly. Well, if you didn't procrastinate, there wouldn't be a problem! Yes, give the kids the Annabelle doll. Why not? The movie's already made by demons. All of the other elves are working at a swift pace, except Calvin, who works super slow, almost as if he's on pause. Santa examined closely his long Christmas list while relaxing in his favorite chair. He ate a cookie and drank some milk. You're a terrible boss! Maybe if you were a good motivator, Calvin wouldn't suck at making toys! Look at this, Calvin sucks so bad, he ripped the head off of the Grimace. He was forgetful, careless, and slow. His work was truly a sight. Eh, Calvin seems happy about it. Keep making angry kitty toilets, Calvin. <laughs> Every year more children. I'll only have enough toys for the really good boys and girls. Then maybe you should slip condoms under the parents' pillows. Santa realizes he's late, then beats Calvin mercilessly for unplugging his alarm clock. Santa sucks at Christmas as much as Calvin. He looked funny, hurrying toward the closet, for Santa wore only one boot. <laughs> We're only five minutes in. There's 65 minutes of this movie left. Unfortunately, the toys Calvin made are filled with quaaludes. Heilig is pissed because Calvin raided his stash. My shop makes beautiful toys. Every one but you, that is. I've told you all year. You have to pay attention. Thanks, Santa's Nazi elf named Heilig. There's something about all of Calvin's toys being useless, but I'm too busy being possessed by this fucking doll! Calvin must be punished. Do you understand, Calvin? You're fired! I think this firing is official. He got his slip from a fortune cookie. The other elves are very happy as they decapitate Calvin so they can place his head on top of the Christmas tree. This is where Santa gives him 20 lashings! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh! Calvin is then put on reindeer shit duty. They loved all of the elves dearly, but Calvin was their favorite one. Are you sure? Are you sure he's the favorite? They look like they want to murder him. Oh, and all the naughty kids are getting a dead cat this year. I hope everything's ready, said Santa, his dick-sucking lips all puckered up. As the elves try fitting the bag in the sleigh, Calvin watches close by, plotting his revenge, murdering the elves in their sleep, and placing their lifeless wooden bodies under trees all around the world, if they don't kill themselves first. The elves straighten the workbenches, putting their tools away. They look forward to a long night's sleep, and turkey on Christmas Day. The elves only sleep eight hours a year, and they only have one turkey to share between all of them, and that's only if Santa is too full to eat it himself. It was then that Calvin was found dead in a closet after watching the VHS tape from The Ring. Oh, and he accidentally takes off in the sleigh. This movie is already 60 minutes longer than it should be. I sure hope Calvin's voice doesn't make it feel longer. Stop! Stop! I didn't want you to go! I don't know how to drive this sleigh! <laughs> After committing Grand Theft sleigh, Calvin crashes into a mountain, and Christmas was never spoken of again. They say at night you can still see Calvin's head in the constellations. That is, if you drink 20 eggnogs first. Some of the elves look happy to no longer be slave laborers. Your sleigh has disappeared! Disappeared? Look at the time! We must find it! Oh dear me! Oh 
only 17 minutes in. 53 minutes of the film remain. I can't believe that for the first time in the history of Santa Claus, the children of the world are going to be disappointed. Uh, was the Great Depression that long ago? I sure hope Calvin makes it back or dies. Now let me see. I should just think a little bit. Over there is Polaris, the North Star. Under the North Star is the North Pole. Why does he look like Trump? I think those are supposed to be logs behind the images, but it looks like this movie of still shots is having a frozen tracking problem. Anyway, Santa's trapped in an anus. Oh, uh, Santa has his sleigh back and Calvin is hiding in the back of it. Sure glad that was wrapped up. Boy, was that intense. Too bad we're not even halfway through. Calvin slipped deeper within the bag, fearful of being found. Then stop using your apparition powers to shine your head through the fucking bag. Santa has work to do. Santa entered the second house through a window. It had no fireplace, and someone had locked the door. Santa was then shot. As Santa drops off presents in an igloo, he was then raptured, but immediately sent back when Jesus remembered Santa's sleigh. I think you're being a little random, Santa. None of these houses appear to be next to each other. He visited a home called an orphanage, leaving 22 pairs of skates. Yes, that's nice, but uh, they asked you for parents. If your Christmas wish is for this movie to get creepier, then you're a questionable person. Also, your wish has come true. After hundreds of visits, Santa reached his last stop. Upstairs in her bedroom, Kim, a little girl, slept. Who took these pictures? I'm getting so skeeved out by this movie that I'm fairly certain it was filmed by the Sea King. Calvin is left behind because he's even shitty at hiding in a sleigh. So he does what any elf would do and watches the little girl as she sleeps. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas and to all a good night. You'd think that would be the end. It's not. Calvin notices that the presents look like the skyline of hell and the elves have all given up on life. Now I'm really going to go to bed. So am I. Fantastic. The movie is even boring inanimate objects. Anyway, back to the brood. Kim then finds Calvin and notices instantly that her mom looks more like a doll than Calvin does. Kim looks like she's auditioning for Mommy Dearest and Joan is about to take her presents away. The rest of the kids look like a before photo in an orthodontist's office. Her asshole siblings make fun of her for getting an elf for Christmas, like they have room to talk. This girl got the dead cat! I'm under the impression that this movie could cut about half of its dialogue. Kim then smiled warmly and tickled his nose. She wanted to be his friend. I'm gonna be your friend. Thanks, I got that from the narration. This movie is so fucking long! You're in the United States, and now you belong to me. You're my own little real doll, and we're gonna have lots of fun. Uh-oh, I know where this is going. We'll both have fundamental friends and fundamentality. Meanwhile, the other elves still don't know that Calvin is gone, because everyone hates Calvin. Calvin's busy boring someone else. Kim thought it was an exciting story. Yes, that's a look that says, So, no Polly Pocket this year either, huh? Not even an easy bake oven? Truly, Calvin has hit rock bottom. If I ever get another chance, I'm going to be the best worker Santa Claus has. Thank you, Martin from The Simpsons. I wish I could shove this movie's head in a toilet. If you think Satan's dolly in the background looks like the stuff of Overlook Hotel nightmares, this next shot shows that even a coloring book can be haunted by a vengeful dead girl. Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin. It should be boring enough to put you to sleep, but sleep is where the movie will fucking murder you. This is all just how the mother sees the world. It's all the uppers she's on. Ain't nothing like watching a movie that constantly looks like it's buffering and like it's fucking possessed. 
She then got Calvin drunk where he confessed to having a fetish for bears and boy does she have a friend to introduce him to. I'm fairly certain the other kids have gotten into mommy's medication. Where's Kim? She's still in her room with that funny looking doll. She told me he was alive and they're having a tea party. That's silly. Why do you let her do that? Still better than the child acting from Let There Be Light. The elves finally figure out that Calvin is missing, but it's 34 years later, so he's long since dead. He's not really that bad of a boy. He must be around someplace. You must keep looking. You're making them work on their one day off? We really should liberate the North Pole. Okay, you need a break? Cause I sure as fuck do. We'll take a little bit of a breather, and when we come back, we'll talk about who made this fucking thing. While IMDb may not recognize this film as existing, unlike a movie like Bat Pussy, whose production team is a complete and utter mystery, thanks to a VHS release, which, wow, who owns that, and an opening credit sequence, we at least know who made this movie. So a VHS cover I've seen where the pictures on the back of the box are scenes in action. As you can see, it comes from titles that were put in years after the production productions, the film was written by children's book author Billy Jean Oxendine. Again, no thanks to IMDb. For all I know, they really did get a hamburger to design this shoot. The narration was supplied by Dorothy Brown Green. Pick a fucking color! But most importantly, the film was produced by whatever change he had in his wallet and directed by Barry Mahon a sexploitation director who is best known for his Grindhouse children's films, Thumbelina and Jack and the Beanstalk, which could be seen spliced into the legendary bad film Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, for which Dorothy Brown Green is also credited as narrator. And with Barry's involvement in the film, suddenly its existence makes a hell of a lot more sense but it doesn't make it any easier to sit through. As we continue on, the elves are still looking for Calvin. The seven elves inspected the barn, searching it through and through. They looked in the feed bin. Pfft, figures this movie has a cum bucket in it. Also, the bag has been fired as well. They figure out that Calvin was not only in the bag, but accidentally delivered, which appears to make them very happy that they don't have to deal with Calvin's shit. Poor little Calvin. He must be miserable. Why, is he watching a movie about himself? Calvin is busy having a staring contest. The loser's head fucking explodes. But Calvin misses home for some reason. Oh, how he wished he was home again. Eating ice cream made of snow. I think you're romanticizing your previous home. No one liked you on the North Pole, and eating snow ice cream is not a good thing, especially since the elves probably pissed in it. Santa is so determined to get Calvin back that he'll enter the States lawfully. Mr. President, I have a very special favor to ask of you. I must get a new visa to visit the United States. Isn't this a little much for someone who flies to any country that he damn well pleases? Santa then dresses incognito as the toy from the Ninja Turtles figures that the elves were making. He better hurry too because elf bullying. The children first stared at Calvin, then began laughing and making fun. They'd never seen a doll so ugly. Why am I watching AI but with elves? Oh, and is the doll ugly? Kids who look like a garden of weeds? Quit that. Calvin's my doll and he's not ugly. Kim then realized she was a fire starter and burned the bullies alive. Santa hides the deer in a coloring book as he goes around flashing people in Central Park and meeting all sorts of people. He discovered some people to be unfriendly. After all, he was a strange looking man. Jane Fonda then kicked Santa in the balls. This movie is going off the still-framed rails. He wondered if people questioned his raincoat. 
when there wasn't a cloud in the sky. No, because they know you're naked under there. And no explanation as to why Elsa Fraulein SS is also riding the bus. Santa goes door to door looking for Calvin and also tell the neighbors that he's a pederast. Thanks, movie. I need a snack. Just remember, if the food isn't perfect, Kim is going to teleport you into a fucking television set. And then the best part of the movie happens. He was full but miserable, too. You shouldn't eat so much, Calvin. Motion. Fucking motion. Even if it was just a tracking problem. Santa will get back to searching for Calvin in a minute. He's not done masturbating in the park yet. This works out because he happens to see Calvin getting bullied. Now both Calvin and Kim have severed heads. You'd think Santa could just take Calvin away. He doesn't. Kim held her doll tightly and in the sand wrote Calvin's name. That's cat litter. Seeing Santa excites Calvin so much that his hat is on its way to being fully erect. Aren't there cops in this town? Hello, Kim. Is that your Christmas present? Yes, sir. His name is Calvin. Maybe go question the old man in the sunglasses and an overcoat. Will someone please release the Atari so these kids can stop spending their days bullying a girl and her elf? The bullies are then distracted when they start groping each other. Kim is lured in by a member of the Manson family, leaving Calvin to be tortured by two bullies. Santa is still jerking off. And I'm fairly certain that Calvin is going to get raped. The boys took Calvin to a large field. Where is this movie going? Oh no! They're not going to do that to me! They can't put me on that airplane! I'm too big! Ah, uh, clearly, attaching Calvin to a remote control airplane is obviously where this movie's going, which leads to the big action scene. The plane tilted. Right, left, then right. Suddenly, it began turning over. Calvin was flying upside down. <laughs> Better special effects than Justice League. And here's another line I wouldn't expect to hear in a Christmas kids movie. Gee, I wish my head felt better. All the blood is rushing to my head. Good, that'll kill you quicker than the movie will. But then you'd miss this riveting action. Suddenly the plane went into a nosedive. Its target, the tree on the ground. He expected the worst preparing to crash when upward he suddenly zoomed. Guess I'm gonna have to take your word on that. This scene is highly unrealistic. I've seen what this hair looks like under heavy wind. As long as this whole movie feels, this plane sequence is the most punishing part of it. It goes on for around 10 minutes, which could be to stretch the movie to over an hour long, which would be fine, except this movie has no business being over an hour long. We can't cut any of this award-winning material. Get that damn fly away from the microphone! 36 hours later, the scene finally ends. Not that it matters, because Santa is still going door-to-door -door confessing to what he did at the church potluck. Santa can deliver presents to every house in the fucking world on a single night, but he can't snatch Calvin away from these fucking bullies. Oh, <laughs> but he can steal a garbage truck. Seriously. As Santa drove the truck down the street, he planned what next he would do. Guess he stole that truck to dispose of the dead hookers or future dead bullies. Santa saw the boys had found their plane. He looked at each one closely, memorizing each one's name. Christmas Evil thinks this movie is too creepy. And why do people keep trusting him? Hopefully, Santa approached the house and loudly knocked on the door. We're collecting toys for next year. So, people just let anyone in their house in the 70s. I'm going to tell you this, and you're the first little child in the world ever to see me. But I'm Santa Claus. Where's the cop? She decides on whether or not to keep Calvin or to let him go, ignoring that he does talk and he did say that he wants to go home. 
and with her resting bitch face, she let him go. The bullies realize the elf is alive, which why didn't they notice that before? So much shit in this movie could be resolved if it moved! Then the mom doubled her prescription. Now there may be only a few minutes left, but never fear, there's still padding. At the airport, Calvin pretended to be a doll. The customs agent wondered what he should do. There was something strange about that toy. <laughs> Work visas, customs agents, the title? Why is this movie so goddamn specific? And you already have a flying machine. Calvin returns home and remembers why he hated it in the first place. Starting his special list for next year, Santa relaxed in his favorite chair. Certain boys needed to be watched more closely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Exhibit A, Your Honor. Calvin could have spent an easy life in the States, but <laughs> nah, going back in the anus seems way more appealing. But Kim will get a special present next year. Calvin had received Santa's message and began making a special toy. He knew the gift would be perfect and Kim would be delighted with joy. Wow, looks so much different. Here, Kim, here's your former friend stuffed. Everyone loses. Now remember, be good little girls and boys. <laughs> a Merry Christmas, everyone! And thus ends the movie equivalent of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. It sort of makes sense that the movie was written by a children's book author, because I can kind of see it working as a children's book. That is, if you take out Flasher Santa. But as a 70-minute movie made up of a box of photos found in Dean Coral's basement, it tries even the patience of people who have seen every movie featured on this show. The only thing that could possibly save this movie would be this narration. Santa is taking his elves around by rocket ship now. I think he picked this group up in the South Pole. They want to make toys for the children, too. This is modern travel. And even then, I'm left with the feeling that the ant from Sleepaway Camp is reading me a Christmas story straight from hell. Say what you will about the rest of the Christmas films we watched this year. At least they're not going to be filmed with a fucking Polaroid. <laughs> Look at you, Calvin. You got chalk right over your face. Well, wipe it off. Okay, don't let my onesie fool you. I may be dressed like gift wrap, but I assure you that the movie I'm about to show you is anything but a present. And if you would like to open my onesie as if it were a Christmas gift, do not let me stop you from seeing what's inside. <laughs> it's chest hair and a dick. If you ever wanted to see what was going on next door to the theater filming Miss Velma's Christmas, then congratulations! Here's Santa Visits the Magic Land of Mother Goose. That's right, this 1967 hell play fits right along with Satan's Christmas Film Festival, which includes the magic Christmas tree and Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin. Although it is a one-up on Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin, in that, well, things actually move in this one. We've seen how the people in Fun in Balloon Land celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, now I have a pretty good idea of how they celebrate Christmas. Oftentimes on this show, we like to say things like, Ah, oh, this looks like community theater. Ah, oh, this is acted like it's a school play. But in this movie's case... Never before, never again. It is literally filmed on a high school stage. Now you know what happens when Herschel Gordon Lewis directs your Christmas pageant. No, seriously, it's directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis, the exploitation movie pioneer behind such early gore classics as Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs. Explains the scene where Mother Goose pulls out Santa's tongue and eats it. 
And if you couldn't tell, this movie is directed by an exploitation filmmaker who's directed everything from slasher movies to porn. Look at the opening logo. Excellent. So are Santa and Mother Goose gonna fuck? I hope not, because I don't want to see anyone in this movie fuck! <laughs> <laughs> He's staring at pictures of his victims. Santa is introducing us to the land of Mother Goose, I think. I don't know if he's sober. And you know, after a busy day, I like to relax a little. Santa had one too many nightcaps. This is definitely the same universe as Christmas Evil. How many people have you killed? Mother Goose. <laughs> An old King Cole. You know, the merry old soul with the Fiddler's Three. <laughs> and Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> oh, yes, that jolly Santa laugh. It isn't ho ho ho, it's ha 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 ha. Don't get too scared, kids. He's about to pass out. You'll have to excuse me. But I'm so tired. Okay, well, Santa's down for the count, so I guess the cameraman is gonna read us the bedtime story. And in case you didn't know how lazy this film is, you can actually hear the director yell, Cut! Cut? They needed that in the movie to prove that the film actually has a crew. Unless that was just the elves ordering someone to cut open Santa so they can feast on his organs. It is an H.G. Lewis movie. Now we meet the Burger King, the best Mother Goose story. Or uh, it might be Old King Cole, whatever. Old King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. <laughs> Own it down, dancing Caligula! Doesn't take long for anything to creep me out! Well, that's nice. I would have been all alone if you hadn't been here. Oh, I think so, too. <laughs> I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Stop fucking the balloons! Apparently, this medieval times could only get their craziest employee to work on the holidays. And if you think this isn't a very gacy Christmas special, just wait until he opens that book again. Just take a look at that. Hmm. No words! The only thing she's done since she's been here is sleep. Because that's a skeleton from a child you suffocated to death by stuffing her in a book with no air holes. Don't worry, Mother Goose's voodoo curse has brought her back to life. Uh, I need a Christmas miracle. I think it would take a magician to make me happy. What did you say? Phew, I can't believe it's taken this long for God to step in and put a stop to these movies. Oh, that's not God. It's another escape metal patient! This is Merlin, and I'm guessing the dunce cap means he put frogs in someone's sandwich in the school cafeteria. Merlin is definitely a magician. Watch this. Oh, heavenly days. You are a magician. Why, that's wonderful. Well, I'm convinced. Watch this. <laughs> See, I'm a juggler. Can you make this movie not terrifying? What? 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 What's this? I don't like these Annabelle movies anymore. At one point, they mentioned Casper the Friendly Ghost, only they try removing the line for rights reasons. I used to have a little friend around the castle who was a little ghost, a very gentle little ghost. His name was Casper. And they replaced his voice with the Budweiser frogs! Guys, I've seen Turkish Casper. No one is coming after you for this movie. By the way, that handkerchief, it's supposed to be Casper. Casper is so much better than this. And yes, I remember Casper and the Angels. Casper also gives Merlin a helping hand when he needs to wipe off semen from jerking off to that dancing nightmare doll. I always wanted to see Merlin fight with his own magic sperm. Ah, good. Casper is a pair of panties now, you rapey fucking ghost. 
And when Cindy Lou Boo starts dancing, it really does feel like it's turning into the Eraserhead holiday special. Good, there's more. So this is what the animals were doing before they got a room in the Overlook Hotel and started fucking. They really need to be much nicer to their toys. That silly doll, I have never known what to do with her. <laughs> Lucky. Just kidding, he stuffs her in a castle to make sure she stays dead. What are you doing with that sword? Yeah, yep, she's staying dead, all right. Lame, if this were Miss Velma, she would have just shot that doll with live ammunition. You know what makes a magic trick even more magical? Filming it with cuts. Oh my god, she's gone, but that rat that snuck in there is way dead. I've never seen Herschel use so many sharp objects with so little blood. That's the real magic trick. Congrats, boys, she's still a corpse. Ooh, another magic trick. Ah, uh, good. It's just like your last magic trick, only this time you didn't stick swords in it. We just get a jack-in-the-box. But tell me, sir, what does it do? It makes jack-in-the-box cheeseburgers. Perhaps it, uh, sings, or, or dances, or recites. No, no, don't dance. Just make cheeseburgers. <laughs> this movie is an hour long, and we're not even halfway through it yet. Yep, it's one of those where I constantly check the time, and the time never seems to be moving forward. And why aren't there violins? Oh, what happens <laughs> Magical. I bet that effect looks great for those watching this live. Props for dancing so well with fucking Pazuzu staring at you. <laughs> they are such an odd couple. This guy, am I right? What am I gonna do with him? I mean, seriously, keep this one away from sharp objects. He should be in a straight jacket. I don't know what I'm gonna do with him. Excellent. I just found the scroll and Wizard Whitebeard. If only I could find Waldo, then I can get the fuck out of this movie. This film is so desperate for movie padding that they actually make the drum first before they can play it. I'm starting to understand why the Nutcracker and the Four Realms wasn't a big money maker for Disney. How in the hell does this have a $120 million budget? <laughs> Perfect! Now the drum will sound good! Ah, forget it. That drum was haunted by a dead child anyway. Now we meet Princess Belle. She has dreams and goals. He'll waken you with a kiss and everything will be lovely. But he's looking for a sleeping beauty. Take a look at me. Do I look like I'm asleep to you? Don't cry over losing the guy who goes around kissing sleeping women. <laughs> oh dear, I've never been able to handle trying females. Merlin, see if you can help her. Then stop making girls cry, you creepy old king! Oh good, they take her to the casting couch. I see this going well. Careful or you'll say yes to being in the puppet inside me. And then Merlin and old King Cole put her to sleep. Because of course they did! How else would she agree to their lame magic show? <laughs> biggest magic trick this movie pulled was trying to convince me that it's a Christmas film. Yeah, yeah, this is all very magical, but when is Mickey Mouse gonna steal your hat? Someone needs to clean up this fucking stage! And that doesn't mean introduce new creepy characters! Where is she? Where is she? Your Majesty, I was told I would find a princess here. Don't tell the Boston Strangler where he can find sleeping women, and don't let him sing either! Never before and never again. Pluh! Thanks, Dion. Too much eggnog this Christmas? Now do your follow-up hit. Why must I be a teenager and hate? <laughs>
Oh my god, never do this to me again! Now slip something in her drink so you can both sing Baby It's Cold Outside. Anyway, everyone's back. Let the orgy commence! <laughs> Will Steve Hollis please invent rock and roll in the magic land of Mother Goose? I should have taken this shot as a sign that the devil is about to show up. <laughs> yeah, the producer is here. Yeah, great, it's the witch from the magic Christmas tree. We just need Calvin to show up, and this can be a Nightmare Christmas Universe's Avengers. The witch uses her black magic to freeze them. You'll be so nice! As a flower pot! <laughs> She's gonna stick flowers in your ass! It's good that she froze the Easter Bunny in a pose that makes it more comfortable for him to check out anyone's ass. Merlin, however, defeats the witch the same way he teases his dog when he's holding a treat. And if that's not enough, try burying her alive! <laughs> Are you really surprised that this is turning into a snuff film? Herschel was the right person to show what a Christmas special would look like if it were directed by Sardou and Ralphus from Bloodsucking Freaks. I think we all know what's gonna happen next. <laughs> Puts the comatose witch in a box and fucking burns her alive! That's right, burn witch, burn! Merry fucking Christmas! Eh, it's creepy, but it's not like they're gonna show us her toasted skeletal remains. <laughs> You can't just awkwardly cut away after that. The least you could have done is saved some of her meat for a Christmas feast after you burnt her alive! Mother Goose finally makes an appearance. Might as well. She's a title character. Let me see what you're all about, old King Cole. <laughs> he created the witch trials. They must have paid Vicky Lawrence a fortune for this crossover with Mama's family. Good, they're unfrozen now, and suddenly they recognize a distinct burning flesh smell. Mother Goose tries sending all of her characters back into the book, except Jack Spratt. Well, you're supposed to be the thin one! Remember, a Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. Mm, they're gonna eat Jack Spratt, aren't they? We'll help you lose weight, Jack. Here, get in this device we made to make mental patients go more insane. We'll strap you in there good so that there's no escape. You'll be in there for months. It's when they stuck more blades in that Herschel once again began twitching over the children's genre, not letting him use buckets of blood. You got to burn someone. Now Jack Spratt isn't fat anymore. That's what months in the box will do to you. A Christmas miracle, I guess. Just when you think it might be over, raggedy and rotting Anne scares the shit out of Scarlett O'Hara before her tennis match. And slap the shit out of her. <laughs> Chicks, bro! <laughs> Why are these women so hysterical? Do something! I have had nothing but crying females today. I'm convinced that a man can do nothing when a woman makes up her mind to cry. Old King Cole was a very old-fashioned king. He liked his women high on uppers and with a martini waiting for him on his throne for when he got home. Don't cry. You can now use this as a feather duster. Clean my piano, woman. And get in a book so you can suffocate as well. There's only eight minutes left. So close, but so far away. Oh, I see. You're important that code. Oh, that's magical. Yes, Kevin Hoffman's study. Mmm, now I know he can make bull semen disappear. Now let's get little Bo Peep in here and do it forcibly. No! Stop pushing me! 
Control your children, Mother Goose. Even the old woman in the shoe is judging you. And they're totally gonna fuck that sheep, rowdy-ass characters. You've been done nothing but a disobedient, recursive a bad doll all afternoon, and I won't stand for it. Merlin, you've got to teach this doll a lesson. Mm, don't want to know what road we're going down now. Then Merlin made her disappear and put her rotting corpse back in the book. Count yourself lucky. At least he didn't set you on fire. Oh, and God shows up again to make it all make more sense. Happiness comes through love for others. For what are you, King Cole, and you, Mother Goose, without little boys or little girls to read your stories? Who cares? They should be in prison. There, get back in there with the Sea King. You all deserve each other. Now that that's over, the other title character can show up again. I, I, I must have been asleep. <laughs> yes, I had a dream. Oh, wonderful dream. <laughs> Great. Santa is turned on by his own night terrors. The movie leaves us with a nightmare image that's not even matched by anything in any Silent Night, Deadly Night film. <laughs> I'll see you all soon! <laughs> Whoa, they took the creepiness of Santa Claus is coming to town and fucking ran with it. Why is this movie bookended by the creepy Santa from A Christmas Story? This is one Santa that makes the elves fight to the death and the winner gets to fuck him. Let it be known that in Santa Visits the Magic Land of Mother Goose, that Santa never actually visits the Magic Land of Mother Goose. It's clear that this was not originally a Christmas film, and was only turned into such by adding Albert Fish Santa Claus to the beginning and end of the movie. Even the poster simply calls itself The Magic Land of Mother Goose, with no mention of Santa. Although, thankfully, the film was later turned into a Broadway smash hit starring Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick as old King Cole and Merlin. Good lord, this stage special and Miss Velma fucking deserve each other. Both of them are about the joys and wonders of Christmas and murdering people on a live stage. Uh, I'm gonna need way more holiday booze to make it through the rest of these movies. You are the girl who all of my life. Perfect! I always wondered what a Christmas special would be like if it were hosted by the long-lost second cousin of Miss Velma. I guess. Maybe. I don't remember thinking that, but somehow this movie exists. Santa's Christmas Circus, starring Wizzo the Clown, is clearly the indoctrination video into the gates of hell, which scientists say found its way to Earth's surface to drive people mad and possibly create the shooter from a karate Christmas miracle. Or maybe there's a more simple reason for the movie's existence. Want to know how this movie happened? Cuz 60s, that's how. Before actually watching Wizzo the Clown's movie, it's important to find out just who is Wizzo the Clown. It, it, no, not that Wizzo. Older residents of Kansas and Missouri are probably mildly familiar with him, as Wizzo the Clown was the alter ego of TV personality Frank Wizardi. With a name like that, the only way it'd be more inevitable that he becomes Wizzo the Clown would be if his name were Frank Clownzinski. Frank started out as a child performer with his family's circus act, the Wizardi Trio, clearly until his family died and Val Kilmer took him in. I may be taking some liberties here to make it spicier. The Wizardi Trio later became the Wizardi Novelty Circus and would travel to county fairs until the Great Depression. Years after serving in the U.S. Army, Frank began producing children's programming in 1953 in Kansas City, Missouri, and thus Wizzo the Clown was born, a character Frank would play up until May of 1987, mere months before his death in September of that year. 
And somewhere along the journey, we got the 1966 special Santa's Christmas Circus. Again, cuz 60s. As a cinema snob, though, I must still give props for it being clearly shot on film. And it's given a gold star only because it made it all the way through my Santa's Christmas Elf named Calvin episode. As you can see, Wizzo has frozen Santa in the Fortress of Solitude. That's the best way to watch this special. Even the opening is made to terrify you. Fantastic. This is the wallpaper from an eight-year-old John Gacy's bedroom. And it features a collection of souls who immediately perished after this special. Although now we know that Santa Claus was created by John Bilyeu, who plays Santa in the film. Who knew Santa didn't exist before this program? Hmm, yes, an opening that asks, did you survive fun in Balloon Land? Well, you're not making it out of Wizzo's Wonderland alive, or at least sober. Hell is that? <laughs> Boy, you say it isn't so out there today. You're crazy. It is really coming down. Take your damn cocaine! I got one for, I got one, let's see here, this one here, that's a good one there. That is for, uh, uh Sam. And straighten out that chair! Get ready for the next hour of your life. Wizzo is bringing more joy to the masses than if Max Shrek himself were one of the Penguin's Red Triangle Gang. I'm sorry, kids. I've got angel dust all over the place. Yuck, 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 yuck. Oh, twinkle, twinkle, little girl. Oh, you're so good today. I, I, well, I, I... This is only 59 minutes long, because after 59 minutes, Wizzo crashes hard. He seems to not know how to stack presents. But now, that, that looks kind of good there. I'm certainly going to... Well... Your wonderland is haunted, bro. People always remember that classic one-shot from Goodfellas, but too many people forget the extended tracking shot from Santa's Christmas Circus. Maybe because they're rightfully terrified. Um, ziggly zaggly ziggly see, oh magic curtain, where can you be? <laughs> there. <laughs> mm, thanks, stagehand. What would we do without you? This was Wizzo's 80th take. It started out completely normal, like Mr. Rogers, but somewhere along the 60th take, this was the result of his madness. It's like a drunken Kevin McAllister is trying to knock him out with a bucket. Whatever puts a stop to Wizzo's evil. The, the, the kids that live down the street, they're just all excited about Christmas and, and everything, and I hope that maybe the, they're going to come over and visit me. I sent them a... Well, if they do visit you, that means they have really shitty parents. Maybe now we can sail away to safety before he gets naked. And you, you may not know it, but this is a magic curtain. And when I step behind this curtain, boy, I'm going to change my clothes. Ah, <laughs> good. The only thing separating us from a naked Wizzo is a curtain. <laughs> well, I tell you, I... This was truly the prestige of its day. Now he's dressed in the outfit that he wears when he visits his favorite hooker after being a really bad boy. This one makes the most sense. So far, it's the closest one to Pennywise. Can't wait until he turns into a giant Paul Bunyan. It's too soon to take away the curtain. I'm still reminded that you were naked back there several times. This is more like Wizzo's ADHD Wonderland. I, I, I think I'll blow hot pot. Yeah, this is gonna be a really long 59 minutes, isn't it? I'm gonna blow just a little higher. Oh, that, oh, now, now I can get rid of the stone. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Wizzo's working with a broken tailbone today. Massage it and make it better. <laughs> I think the only reason the camera is moving is because the cameraman finally wants to strangle him. Cut away, quick! Do 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 do! Oh, 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 whistle! Whistle! Oh, God, the live action Lady in the Tramp sucks! Sorry, I'm interrupting mail time, I think. I have to go uh, take my guitar lesson, so I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye. That was random, but on the plus side, the dog made more sense than Wizzo. And at least they're just keeping to themselves. Hi. 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 
No! Maybe I'm being a little hard on him. Wizzo was great with these kids, who shouldn't at all be terrified. Ha! Oh, this is my girlfriend here. Hey, listen. Ha Exhibit A, Your Honor! Ah, look at how riveted these kids look. Listen, don't stand quite so close to the floor, will you not? Oh. <laughs> that was genuine. Now he asks them to get into their circus outfits. He's gonna ask them to change behind the magic curtain, isn't he? But only after sprinkling magic dust on them. First thing I have to do is sprinkle some whizzle dust on you. Ziggly zaggly ziggly zout. I'm feeling awfully sleepy, Wizzo. Perfect, now you're ready to go behind the magic curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my clown! You know who should be paying attention to the man behind the curtain? The police! This is all gonna end with them being turned into porcelain dolls, isn't it? Again, these kids look completely riveted. Must be why none of them are smiling, even when a performer comes out. There's still not a single smile on their faces, even after Wizzle let her out of the basement. Uh, we're gonna have to see all of them perform, aren't we? And now, here is someone from the Orient! She's not from the Orient at all! Wizzo is hereby cancelled! Now he's teaching them the Wizzo sobriety dance. It's the walk he takes when Mr. Police Officer pulls over Wizzo children. <laughs> Are they ever going to change angles? Oh <laughs> I take that back. Never change camera angles again. Mm, yes, they couldn't possibly get more excited. Please explain to me whether this is Santa's Christmas Circus or Wizzo's Wonderland. They both suggest two separate locations. Maybe they had to move here after Santa's Christmas restraining order. Could it be because he's randomly waving around a gun out of nowhere? God damn it, 60s! Two and three! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lame. If this were Miss Velma, that gun would definitely be real. Here, cut back to the dog. That's less frightening than Wizzo with a deadly weapon. I guess I'll just have to go practice my bench. But enough about that. Wizzo's got to put the kids in danger. They're waiting patiently for Wizzo to accidentally kill himself. Then they will truly be free. And stop cutting to the kids. They've gone from looking bored to just looking depressed. I know why she's sad. It's because on the other side of the room, Bat Pussy is being filmed. Wizzo, you're not cheering anyone up. You're just making it worse. Uh, you're worried about uh, some of the people that really don't... Uh... Give that damn kid a cough drop! Wizzo is trying to speak here! This is starting to get very unrealistic. We all get set to get out the atomic... Time machine. It's going to be your ass, isn't it? Wizzo's starting to come down, kids. Finish the special for me. I'm gonna dream about chasing dragons. I'm only kidding. Clearly, Wizzo is the inventor of the time machine. Mmm, <laughs> powerfully magical editing. Wizzo has created Tom Servo's overweight ant. I sure hope he gets the time machine working. Oh, I certainly hope nothing happens, because I'm wondering. Mm, millions of casualties were needed for sweet relief. Here, take them inside the Christmas tabernacle from Zardoz. Oh, kids, look, look, looky there. And then the children were turned into animatronics and forced to deliver Christmas cheer to the fiery pits of hell for all eternity. No one tell the kids that that dog is definitely dead. If Connell Cochran decorated the Silver Shamrock factory for Christmas, it'd look a little something like this. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I, I, I like that. 
the combination of low budget and 60s children's entertainment will always be the most effective form of horror cinema. Guess that was a really weird time machine, kids. <laughs> it didn't take us back in time at all. Just showed us the killer's apartment from Christmas Evil. I can top that. How about the magic of filming a store window during business hours, children? Wizzo is stepping over his own lines with his excitement. All I gotta say is that one's gonna get pretty di- Oh, <laughs> that's cute. If you think that's cute, here's a masturbating Coca-Cola bear. Is it safe to come out now? Is Wizzo gone? Okay, down I go. When we come back, Wizzo is gonna shield them with an umbrella made from the skin of dead children when the sky rains a storm of blood and teeth. <laughs> That's the most logical next step. Now that we're back, we can see the factory that makes more children to do his evil bidding. <laughs> Just think, kids, all the people walking in the reflection, many of them are probably dead now. And pay attention to your damn baby. They've fallen on their back and clearly can't get up. Much like how Fun in Balloon Land resorted to parade footage after a while, this one turns into a commercial for store displays. I wouldn't be surprised if they got Aunt Martha back to do the narration. I wonder if your own poodle at home could stand on its hind legs. I think he could. What did that have to do with anything? There, sad little girl, are you happy now? You are beginning to understand just what I was talking about. Some people being real happy and other people being real happy for Christmas, huh? You do? <laughs> That's a nod that says, if I do anything else, his jaw will become unhinged and swallow me whole. Still sad? Here's more random footage to pad out the runtime. Good God, this stuff would be creepy in the daylight, but at night, it's even more haunting. Did they just break into stores after hours and film holiday displays before robbing the cash registers? The cameraman has been outside these stores for hours, filming through the windows. He hasn't seen his family in months, but he must press on, or it will be his kid's teeth and blood Wizzo makes rain from the sky. No, no, that doesn't mean I want you to cut back to the clown and his next devious plan. Yeah. I think that's the whole trouble. I think maybe it would be a good idea if we had some refreshments right about now. Do not drink anything the clown gives you, children! And I don't think he really has a jar of peanut brittle. Okay, you ready? There was... ah! Wizzo just came. If you listen closely, I think you can hear one of the kids shit their pants. One more wonderful, wonderful adventure. Just kidding, that was Wizzo. His ass also works like opening a jar of spring snakes. Oh, thank God, more stock footage. Back in 1966, all department store Santas were drunk anyway, so might as well make the animatronic one falling down drunk as well. Why does this have to be filmed with no lighting? I realize it's after hours, but this looks like Billy is off strangling a co-worker in the stock room. This is Santa's Christmas Circus, not an old YouTube review of Santa's Christmas Circus. Ooh, I've interrupted quiz time. It's a place, oh, I know. It's a place I know. I know. way down at the South Pole down there. They don't want to answer your question, Wizzo. They just want to go to the bathroom. They've needed to piss for hours. He's either communicating with the North Pole, or the twist is he's one of the ghosts figuring out that he too is trapped in the Overlook Hotel. Yeah, that I think about it, you kids could use this to contact the police. I better get rid of it. Three, Wizzo, Wizzo! Oh my god, how'd he do that? Pay attention, kids. If you're bad, Wizzo will roll you up in this carpet and throw you off a bridge. <laughs> this is supposed to be a magic carpet. After the opening, with Wizzo snorting a pocket full of angel dust, I should have figured this would all lead to a magic carpet ride. Hold on, kids, or you'll plummet to your death. Don't mind the pollution, children. None of you kids want to make it to 40 anyway, right? Just breathe in these fumes and you'll be young forever. They're on their way to Santa's workshop, which I'm sure will look totally normal and not at all nightmarish.
this was two years after Santa Claus conquers the Martians. So now it makes sense that Santa's workshop is on Mars for some reason. At least on Mars, they're smart enough to run out of the room at the prospect of Wizzo breaking in. First things first, kids. We need to flatten this gingerbread house because we're a jolly group of assholes. And there is the creator of Santa himself, John Bilyeu. Did you have a good trip? Well, no. Well, we're stuck in a cloud up here someplace. Wizzo is right. This is definitely the result of a very bad trip. Well, guess we have to let Wizzo in, elves. Ho, 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 no. There, there they are. I think I see the magic carpet landing now. And they're getting out of it. There they are now. That really covered up the lack of an effects budget. Can't wait for this guy to just describe the Polar Express to us. Now let's make this workshop extra creepy to celebrate Wizzo's arrival. You see, kids, back in 1966, toys were just expected to be haunted by evil spirits. Santa, thank God you can now save us from Wizzo's reign of terror! Wizzo will show up once he disposes of the two dead kids who fell off the magic carpet. Everyone point and laugh at Wizzo, children! What a fucking loser! <laughs> Wizzo is here for a bit of quid pro quo with Santa. Well, the favor that I wanted you to do was to help me with one of my little friends I brought up here to see you. And then Wizzo unzipped his pants and Santa sucked Wizzo's baton down like a candy cane. Gather round, children, and let me tell you the happy story of my dear Christmas elf named Calvin. Again, no. Okay, kids, we should leave now. We've been here for minutes. I'm just kidding. None of you are ever returning home. <laughs> Not that Santa is any less creepy than Wizzo. I Wizzo, I yes. One thing. Yeah. Don't forget to go through the clothes changer. Boy, am I glad you said that. And then Santa ended up on the same offender list as Wizzo, and the kids were immediately placed in a much safer foster care. Let's show off these amazing effects one more time. There they go. I see them now. Goodbye, Wizzo. Goodbye, boys and girls. <laughs> Move over, Rise of Skywalker. This is the real special effects extravaganza of the season. Now that we're back, get in your closet, children. We'll bring you out for air again next season. Let's all get behind the curtain and get naked one more time. Remember, kids, if you tell your parents, no more Christmas cookies. <laughs> I can tell they're all really sad to be leaving Wizzo. And Merry Christmas to you, and Merry Christmas. Bye! Uh, listen, be careful, don't kick a foot that. Bye! Go goodbye, don't kick a hole in the tent. <laughs> Thanks for making a goodbye with a creepy clown seem even more awkward. As jolly as this was before, it weirdly ends rather depressing. And I'm, I'm kind of lonesome. But I got a lot of things to do, and I, I, I guess I just, but I, I guess I'm kind of lonesome. I'm kidding. See, it's all happy. He's by himself with a bunch of presents to himself before he goes into hibernation. This is a happy ending. See, I was right. I told you it's only 59 minutes long because it ends with him crashing from his drug high. How could you have doubted me on this? I am as shocked as anyone else watching this. I thought that last winter, I already saved a horror circus full of demon clowns. Hello, boys and girls. I am never sleeping again. Eh, guess you can't save them all. Just think, like fun in Balloon Land, somewhere in the world there is an adult who, as a child, saw this in a theater. I don't know, the 1966 newspaper ad for it seems enticing. Enchanting excitement for young and old alike. Yes, it truly is the perfect movie for kids and their captors. You know a movie is good when it doesn't advertise when it starts, but it advertises when you'll be able to leave, and only a dollar? That may seem cheap, but in 1966, that was the equivalent of $11,000. 
At least you can see the Snow Queen cartoon. The Snow Queen was kind of the Olaf's Christmas of its day. Only instead, families boycotted the feature presentation so they could be left with nothing but the cartoon short. Well, IMDB is correct when it says that if you like Santa's Christmas Circus, then you'll like, <laughs> yeah, no shit. And thus, the Christmas season has ended, my friends. Not just because in a few days Christmas will be over, but because all Christmases in the future have been cancelled to prevent something like Santa's Christmas Circus starring Wizzo the Clown from ever happening again. And more importantly, so that I never have to wear these onesies ever! And everything. Oh, the foot's gone! Oh, where's my foot? My foot's gone! Where's my foot? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I thought.